Longtime fans of the show should be familiar with the lender formerly known as Sue Pullen, and I'm pleased to announce that she's back, fresh off a rebrand and ready to help as Sue Mackey. Sue is a certified mortgage advisor at Fairway Independent Mortgage, an equal housing lender who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. She has over 20 years of experience helping thousands of homeowners. Whether it's purchasing, refinancing, or even a reverse mortgage, Sue will help. Sue's licensed in 36 states now, so reach out and let Sue Mackey it happen for you. The best way to reach her is just give her a call at 520-977-7904 or in an email, spullen at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number of 2289. Sue Mackey has an MLS number of 206048. That email again, spullen at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number is 520-977-7904. Shoot Sue an email and let her know she needs to update that address. Disclaimer time. This is where I tell everyone to lighten up. It's just a podcast. Trading is like that roller coaster at the amusement park. Thrilling, unpredictable, and potentially stomach churning. What works for one person might leave another clutching their hat in the wind. Our hosts and guests, they're awesome, knowledgeable, full of insights, but we're not financial advisors. So don't rush to make any investment decisions based solely on our banter. Always consult with professional or do your own research. Plus, let's face it, we'd like to have fun, laugh, enjoy the trading ride together. It's all in the name of good podcasting fun. So remember, take it easy, don't bet the farm, and keep your seatbelts on at all times. Thank you for listening. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the China Shop, home of the Band of Traders podcast. I am your host, Kyle, and joining me tonight, we've got Vata Trading's Baba Yaga, Abu Alphas, Flurry. How you guys doing, boys? Good, good. Fantastic. Good to see the chat popping off, too. Uh, glad you guys decided to spend your, your lovely Friday evenings with us. This is, uh, this is probably better than most clubs in town, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah drinks are stronger. There's no parking, no cover charge. It's a good pregame to the poker night. <laughs> there you go. Um, on the agenda for tonight, let's see. We're going to be checking in on the effectiveness of last week's PSA, uh, and that'll hopefully lead us into a conversation uh, about quieting the impulses. Uh, and as usual, we'll follow it up some good, bad, and ugly. And after last week, we're probably going to have to get another bold pie addiction. That pie bot was fucking spicy. <laughs> it gave me another good one today, too. Uh, we'll take a look at all that and more after everybody gets a chance to plug and promote. Baba, buddy, what do you got going on, man? I say the same thing every week. I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you promote to your flippers uh, Crudelli podcast then? Oh yeah, that's great. Good call, Kyle. You're always so full of great information. I meant to put a note on so, that in the script before I sent it to you. <laughs> uh, we can throw that in the show notes. So yeah. a couple days ago, I don't know when they recorded it. I saw it like two days ago, maybe. I tweeted about it. They recorded it a while ago. It just came out. Okay, recorded it a while ago. Just came out. Listen to that, and I thought it was just cool, man. It's cool to hear like OGs kind of talk shop, and um, yeah. So if you haven't listened to Crudelli's episode with Two Year Flipper with Jeff, go check it out. It's very interesting. Talks about floor days, talks about being one of the largest bond traders in the pit, pushing orders through for some big guys. So go check it out. It's really cool, man. It's a uh, it's from a different. It's like. From a different era of this game, but it's cool. <laughs> his conversation or his explanation, more like diving into the K algo, got me. I, I reached out to him after listening to that, and Flair and I are going to try to do a deep dive with him. I think next week we're going to try to sit down. Yep. Something so, like that. yeah, there, he's got a lot more stories to tell, <laughs> and they're always good. It was cool. They were talking about uh, stories in the pit, and uh, Crudelli was talking about how ES was trading the 600 handle. I was like, oh my oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> was that like? Not today. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Uh, Flair, you got anything going on, man? Any updates on the uh, restaurant? Rare Barrel, what are they up to? Drinking whiskey <laughs> and tequila. Uh, they actually have, they have a, uh, you know, like in the whiskey world or bourbon world, uh, you can, you can basically procure a barrel and then they'll bottle that barrel for you. Oh, nice. uh, they'll even like flavor it in certain ways. Uh, Baba, do you know what the little uh, uh, inserts into the barrel are called? Uh, Steins I know it, or yeah, spires. Like, yeah, spire. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, like so you get to kind of like pick your flavoring or whatever. So they, they did do that for a couple of like uh, summer bourbons. They partnered with somebody. So they have like a rare barrel you know, flavor or whatever. It's got a signature label and some stuff like that. So oh, that's I think cool. they have a few bottles left if somebody wants to go check it out or whatever. But yeah, always nice to go drink some bourbon. I'm probably due to go over there and uh, I still need to do a tequila one. And um, yeah, we usually just uh, drink some bourbon and <laughs> sit in front of the camera. I just want to go check out that, that bookshelf behind them where they film. 
That thing is incredible. Well, come on down at any time. Any time. Come I, I, on I, down. I'm planning on it. We, you, you guys can bring the film crew into the office. We'll rip some fucking NQ. And, uh, <laughs> you mean my webcam? <laughs> webcam and daughter? <laughs> Bro, don't, don't downplay the production. Oh, geez, I know. <laughs> uh, you know they got a video guy over there too in in the studio. So, but I heard they got a sound guy who's really good. They got a sound guy and a video guy, both very good. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> for the show news, and I got to give another shout out to Bear Goes Long. I don't know if he knows this, but the uh, the guy I just talked to uh, last week, Sean from Sound Performance Psychology, he actually found us through Bear. I was kind of surprised because he hadn't heard of the podcast uh, initially when I asked him if he wanted to be on the show. But once I said the name, he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know you guys." So I was wondering, yeah, how the hell did you find us then if it wasn't through the podcast? That was from Bear. Bear's the one who's been promoting us, man. So thank you, Bear. That's awesome. Uh, Keep an eye out for that episode because you'll see why I'm hoping we can get some more collabs with him. I'm hoping maybe we can do, I don't know, maybe some event for the Discord. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Not much new on the chart watch other than my disappointment with Sweden. Uh, Lucas's call to action remains unheeded. So I'm going to take a pause right here to play that again. Hallå, hallå till alla mina svenska vänner. Ert stöd har visats i siffrorna, men nu behöver vi er hjälp. Så minst 12 stycken till, kanske till och med dubbelt så mycket för att nå första plats. Så säg till era vänner att prenumerera på Band of Traders. För att om vi når första plats så lovar jag att jag käkar surströmming. All right, Sweden, you got two weeks left to fulfill my prediction of top five by the end of July. So get on that shit, please. <laughs> <laughs> How do those demands generally work out? Like, is that all you have to say? Well, I try to ask it nicely, and that's not working. <laughs> Step up your fucking game, well. Sweden. Let's go. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mark D. You uh, sent in the message. You're giving us the correction. Uh, Balut is from the Philippines. I, I think we were trying to struggle for where that was from last week. Balut. Balut. Yeah, it's the... That, like the fermented egg or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can call it an egg. It's like an unhatched chicken. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, no. But do you guys know he runs an airsoft store in California? No, like uh, airsoft mm-hmm. guns? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, he sent me the website. It's airsoftmasters.com. If, if you're looking for something, man, he's got the All crazy big selection. Needs. A lot of cool stuff. Yeah, help support one of our own. Go check it out, airsoftmasters.com. All right, um, probably check in with that bold pie prediction, and then we can get on to some topics. Didn't it predict like a 5% down move or something? Yeah, 5%. Decline over the week driven by growing fears of a looming recession and perceived lack of action from the Federal Reserve. Sick. Spy closed down close 1.96%. Oh, that's it? And it was, I think it was more on fears of presidential candidate assassinations and crowd strike outages. But I mean, all in all, it's still pretty solid. Yeah. Red week predicted it. He did better than I thought I was going to do. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get another one of those before we move on or before we uh, end this episode here. But I think for now it's time to uh, get into our first topic. So as we alluded to, and I think this is one that Baba wanted to, to start us off with, uh, he wants to know if anybody tried to fade the trend this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, man, man. So, well, um, you want me to say a few words about that? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we can give people a moment to raise their hand and be shamed if you like first. I mean, I'm not going to be able to see them unless they post it in the chat, <laughs> unless it was one of you, but I know it, it wasn't. Me. So. <laughs> well, man, I know, shaking well, his we, head, so I think he's well, good, We too. traded together, and we texted all day, so. <laughs> Pro shot saying he's not fading either, so I think we're good. Yep. <laughs> all right, good. Well, good job, everybody. Okay, I just, we actually messaged about how oddly timely our last Friday's yeah. episode was, and then I just, we were talking about the show tonight, and I just thought, you know. Uh, okay, so I'll admit it. I did take um, <laughs> I did take a couple of longs, banks. Which, yeah, I did take a couple of longs, but they were very, you know, they were set up plays for small points after like having some good trend direction trades. And then there was one day that I didn't, you know, I did not take any longs. So it was another day I took like one. And then today I took like two backside scalps early before the bottom fell out. Mm-hmm. But I guess my my thing my attitude about the whole idea was like if you're a regular listener to the show and you were a listener of last Friday's episode and and you still faded the trend this week, I just want to know why. So <laughs> right. could you call or send a message or <laughs> come to the Discord? It's free and we can talk about it. I mean, but you know why? Because because it's uh, it's challenging, right? Uh, yeah. And 
it's emotional. Trend days are emotional. And that's uh, part of the reason for the conversation one last week. And um, can you predict these volatility environments are coming? Eh, I mean, yes, no. Uh, there's some structure things. There's some breaks of structure. There's some uh, blow off tops into data assassination attempt. Like, you know, there's some cues where, you know, some things are happening that these days are possible. And at the very least, I think like, did you fade it all day? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're doing that, yeah, you're doing yeah. that, uh, you know, that's probably more of a mental breakdown. Let but me, it's, let me clarify. But it's continuing to try. Yes. When I, yeah. You. When yes. I say fade, I don't mean, did you take a long, right. that's yeah. fine. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Do, do you, but I mean, but what I, I guess unsuccessfully attempt to be the guy that caught the low, did you do that all, all week? Or did you do that the 17th, 18th, and 19th specifically? Right, right. That uh, uh, Unsuccessfully, I would presume, because it wasn't a lot in those three days to, um, to do. And those three days gave – they checked a lot of those boxes that we just we just talked about. Yes. Like we yes. just talked about on Friday. You know, to the point, I mean, I was actually kind of shocked that um it's not a trade that lives forever. Mm -hmm. But boy, when it shows up, like did you notice, Larry? I'm sure you did. Like the VPOC of the first 15 minutes was the sell like three days in a row. Did you see my tw my Twitter this week? I, I like literally haven't tweeted in, <laughs> I don't know, three months or something like that. <laughs> and it's so funny, dude. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take my fucking victory lap on this one and the dude touched on it. it. So it. I probably haven't tweeted in I don't know whatever the gap was or at least anything significant or just like retweeting stuff or whatever. Uh, I think on Monday, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to drop some alpha on, on some stuff. I'll, I'll probably just pick it back up and start start just tweeting some stuff. Because Twitter is just, it's so stupid now. So yeah. I'm just going to help. Nobody's going to arb out my edge in this shit. Because the more I've traded with people, one, I've realized that you could give them the trade on the platter. And yes. they'll still fuck it up. Uh, or they don't have the nerves to, to trade it the way it's supposed to be or whatever. So, you know, there's a very small select group of people that have the discipline to take your edge and actually turn it into money. Uh, so I fucked up your trades before, Flurry. Hey, man, I fucked them up all the time, too. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, but anyway, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start dropping some stuff on like a pretty regular basis. I really don't care. Um, you know, right, wrong, the whatever. It's just I'm going to drop some stuff that I feel like is actually helpable edge because, you know, just whatever. The environment sucks over there. So anyways, uh, I come back from a hiatus and I, I drop the stats on a 15 minute opening range being directional, which basically says mm -hmm. it's a trend day, right? And and the reason was, Baba, from our conversation on Friday, just I know what's yep, yep. like my work says this is coming. Uh whether it's right or wrong doesn't matter. I, it's just it says it's coming. So it's something that I'm being prepared for. That's why we had the conversation last week and it's why we saw, you know, in my opinion, the week that we had, you know, sometimes it's just luck and preparation and it aligns and you look smart, but whatever. Uh so anyways, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna post about these uh 15 minute opening ranges because it's an early precedent to a trend day. If the if the 30 second opening range is a no tick, if the 15 minute opening range is a no tick, which means that one side, when I say directional, that means that one side of the range uh, has not been traded through and the other side of the range has been broken. So we have a 15 minute range and we're going down uh, typically, right, in this environment now we're in, and we're mm -hmm. 15 minute directional sell side. There's a, there's a point of control, a volume pock, in that 15 minutes, which is super easy to set up in Sierra charts with, uh, you know, some timing uh, in the studies and the SGs or whatever in the inputs. But if you look at the POC for the first 15 <laughs> minutes, you can just manually it. draw it. Right? It's just it's like the stupidest <laughs> alpha. Uh, so I posted the stats on it. And I think it's like, you know, it was like a year's worth of back test. It was like 100 or some 200 sample size, something obnoxious. You know, and it's got like a 42 or 43 percent win rate, which it's on a two to one R. It's, I told you exactly what the stop needs to be, exactly where the take profit is. And it's, you know, it's got like, I don't know, 12 percent equity or 9 percent equity somewhere in that on any given day, sell side or buy side. So I posted that literally that day. It went up, hit the hit the 15 minute pock and then crashed, uh, you know, 300 points. Uh, but it hit the two, two R. It happened three times this week. Uh, and then actually the second day, I was like, you know what? We have a setup that's coming that's a follow up to this, which is when you gap through an opening range. Uh, that was a trend day. So when you gap through a trend day, uh, there's a there's another stat that basically says to a high probability when you gap through that trend day, you're going to either go 75 points in the direction of the gap through the trend, which was a down downwards gap, 
uh, or close the day in the direction of the gap. And it literally resolved that stat in, you know, minutes uh, yeah. of the open. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, you so basically like sell Wait, the was, open kind of thing. Was that the eight? Was that the 18th? That was your was, big day, Baba. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I think that was your big day. Uh, yeah. Gap through yeah. ODR was uh, Wednesday. No, that Wednesday. was the day before. Was that okay. was Wednesday. Wednesday. That was Wednesday. Wednesday was in. Which Thursday? I mean, that, that status is, is absolutely obnoxious. It's seventy eight percent. It's a small sample size. It's only happened eighteen times in the last year. Uh, but it's seventy eight percent of the time we trade seventy five points in the direction of the gap. So I didn't. I'm not gonna. You know, build the trade however you want. Uh, you know, wherever you enter, whatever. Uh, you know, I was mentioning that it's like a cool stat arb of like. It, not not stat arb in the sense of like a H, HFT company who's like trading a thousand different you know instruments against each other. A stat arb in the sense of like you can use that stat and arb that information against your normal setup. So mm-hmm. if there's a seventy eight percent chance that we trade seventy five points below the open, uh, you know, do something in your in your system to get short and and arb that seventy eight percent into an existing trade. Whether you do it with size, whether you do it with uh, you know, how much conviction you get, or if you're, you know, averaging in or whatever you're doing, arb the stat. But anyways, that also hit too. So there was like two stats based on like, essentially for me, what is like one of my trend day indicators, this 15 minute opening range being directional, um, short of the 30 second opening range, and and previous 15 minute opening ranges, which is also like a big thing, right? When you start taking out old trend days up, new trend days down tend to follow after that. So uh, there was just a lot of cool stuff uh, around that 15 minute opening range, and again, like uh, come back to Twitter and uh, just you know, drop some stats, and it just hopefully it helps some people. Honestly, hopefully some people you know did something with it, or at least like it inspires somebody because that's where almost like 95 percent of the work that I've I've done in trading was either inspired by or you know rooted in something that I've learned from someone else, or inspired by someone else, or a collaboration with somebody else. So. You know, again, hopefully one, our conversation on Friday helped uh, some folks be mm-hmm. mentally prepared uh, to either not lose money, like we said last week, either not lose money or make money, right? I was really pushing on the capitalization side of the thing, uh, but... I was being the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, keep people safe, but Claire, there's also, there were, there were, you know, push, make make that money. There's week makers this week, multiple times. I don't remember if it was Wednesday or if it was Thursday, but I heard your voice in my head saying... Wait, there's still going to be opportunities. Wait, there's still going to be opportunities. Uh, because, like, I don't trade the first 15 minutes anymore. That's like a new thing for me. Patience. So sitting and Patience. watching that initial sell off, and that was that was hard to sit through and wait for another opportunity. But man, I hit some freaking bangers just by sitting on my hands for longer than usual. So yes, Kyle did that, and I actually messaged you about that if I remember correctly. I think you did, yeah. Because you put your little notes on the chart. Yep. You know, and you put the little thing like, oh. Oh, pissed off. Wish I could trade here or something like that. Or I, I don't remember what it was. I'm really pissed off. But whatever you it said, annoying, you I think it's there, so, yeah, yeah. I acknowledged the fact that you would like to be able to have traded a certain setup, but you were sticking to the play or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then that patient trade showed up, which ended up, you know, plenty of meat on the bone. Oh yeah. Before it gets too far out of my mind, you mentioned this just then, Flair talking about stats. I think, I think there's probably like. I know this is a little deviation from our plan and it's going to be a short one. I think there's like a spectrum of how people feel when someone says something about stats work. Oh, okay. So there's, so I'm just perceiving this from conversations I've had with people and what I see on Twitter, which I try not to, I don't, I've also not done a lot on Twitter. I think all it is is band of traders podcast stuff or like me shouting out someone that I've saw something that they did. Yeah. That was cool. Twitter's got um, kind of, Ugh, yeah, yeah. I, it used to be cool. It used to be fun, man. Like that, there was I don't know. It's, it's a lot of hate on there now. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 maybe we'll bring it back to life. Maybe we'll do that. But yeah. but anyways, <laughs> um, there's a spectrum of so there's on the one hand it's like uh, you need a stat for everything. Every time you pull the trigger, you better have a stat. It's tied to a setup and it's filtered and da 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 and like so. This is very rigid approach. Mm-hmm. And then I think there's this far to the other side that's like, you know, the market is alive and, you know, like stats don't mean anything because what's happened in the past doesn't matter to the future and uh, all of that. And and so the implication of like that having a statistical analysis of a certain day or setup or whatever is just a waste of time. You know, back testing is a waste of time. Um, all of that is just it's 
you're trying to eliminate the fear that you have and you're using that as like your binky you know what i mean yeah every time i've ever felt the fear of or like the desire to not go back test an idea it's usually because i'm scared that there's no efficacy there and i'm about to go figure that out well so this brings me to my my point we should do an episode together yeah. where we talk about the and we have a little bit in the past but i wonder if it's not uh seasonally appropriate and contextually appropriate for kind of the last couple of weeks and especially this week to just talk about kind of the the playground between because because i think both extremes are kind of off mm-hmm. the playground in the middle that probably like to some extent was where we all find ourselves um so i know for me like you've heard me say how how many times that you know, statistically, we should see a rotation to at least this point of the prior range. Right. And then if we extend past that point, you know, that there's less drop off as far as in expectancy. The stats, yeah. Exactly. So it's not so. So how you and you you mentioned Flurry's stats arb. And I think I, I personally like we've talked a lot about that kind of thing. But I think that may be what what would be helpful for people is. To th- for us to do a, a round table or maybe we have you know so another person not just us us two but someone else in and let's let's just talk about the application right. of where's the trade stats how do you yeah take that and okay. go well you know and just get, you know because i would love i would love that if there was someone out there who was like stats are stupid the market's always new and fresh i'd love for maybe us to give them something else to think about move a little more this way and then for the rigid person who's like if i don't have you know like move them towards the like you know how they do whatever so pro shot just said the market's always new and fresh it's funny because it's humans repetitive behavior that involve themselves in said market so (laughs) well i wonder if chris dover wouldn't be a good get for that uh, maybe I'll oh, reach yeah, out to know. him and see. I think I know he's real big on back testing. Like he's the one who. Yeah, lit- he just he just he has to think the way that we think about it. Mm-hmm. So if he disagrees, then like then we're we get have to, to kick him, out. him off the island. <laughs> I, yeah, I think we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> you must agree. I mean, it'd be interesting to talk to somebody who doesn't, you know, whatever does. Well, I think so too. I know. Doesn't feel that way because I dude, said that at, at the end of the day, shame like, the I honestly, yeah. like, you know, stats, no stats doesn't matter. Like, it's been a big reinforcer for my confidence to execute yes. in my observations, uh, in my, you know, order flow trading, and whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, again, that's why I call it stats arb. Because you are, you're like, you're using historical data to influence your discretional decision making in, in the moment. And it's a powerful tool. I mean, it's, it's like playing poker with, uh, you know, understanding the ranges and, and knowing mm-hmm. that you have an edge against your opponents. The board's still going to run out some, you know, wonky ass way and you're going to lose to, <laughs> you're going to, you, you're, you know, your aces are going to get cracked by queen 10 offsuit sometimes, right? And that's just it. But like, you're going to go into the hand with a little bit more equity than uh, potentially going in completely blind or with a worse hand or something like that. So yeah, imagine how much better you feel when you, when you go into a pot and you know, you got 10 to one odds in the pot and you know, it's four to one, you're going to hit your straight draw. And you know that that's going to give you the net hand. Yeah. Like that feels pretty good knowing the stats. But to Baba's point, like, where's the trade? What do you do with it? Right. Like uh, the, yeah. the gap through trade. Uh, I didn't tell anybody what to do with it. God bless if anybody, you know, figured out a way to take the, the information and turn it into a profit. I have my style, uh, which, you know, it's uh, there's probably a bajillion ways you could have used that stat to our a profit for the day. But, you know, like, let's give some raw examples. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm comfortable, uh, you know, with a few of them, uh, giving some examples of like a way that you could do what you're already doing, but use historical data to inform the decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even stats, like, so we're talking about stats on a, on on the raw equity or uh, of, you know, a specific setup or something like that. There's also just like your personal stats too, right? Like, how do you trade inside of like your equity curve? How do you trade inside of the fact that you're a 48% win rate trader in a two to one roughly R system? Like what, what do you do with that information? I think there's, there's value in that. I think hmm. let alone do people not know or back test, uh, you know, and some people don't even have setups, right? Like they're just trading a basket of like what ifs and that's fine. There's, there's a group of people who can be very successful doing that. And it's just, you know, it's not most uh, or it's not how I've found success. But, um, you know, if you if you if you do do that, you can at least look at the stats of like when I entered the market on any day, given day, 
my average risk to reward is this uh, or whatever, you know, Sierra calls a profit factor. It doesn't matter whatever you're doing. My average loss is this. My average win is this. I take this many trades. Uh, you know, what can we do with that information and how can you arb that into where are you at in your equity curve? What can you what are some of the things like trading the equity curve is like a whole other great like stats conversation, which kind mm. of ties into like, what do you do when you're trading a close your eyes and follow the system system, uh, you know, like trading uh, session session times, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, or yeah. even like, dude, like, I could give you a bot that trades this 15 minute opening range, we could write a bot that does that in, in literally three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could be auto trading the 15 minute opening range in NQ that has a 42% win rate over the year. And in theory, if, if it, the last 365 days are a representation of the next 365 days, if you do nothing except for turn your computer on and say yes, auto trade, uh, you should make roughly 25 to $30,000. Now, do you, do you have the ability to actually do that on a one lot and watch it go through its peak drawdown of, you know, whatever? It's a lot harder when you haven't done the stat work yourself. Yeah. And, and it's also like, here's the thing is, uh, again, worked with a lot of people on like uh, automation. I've worked on automation myself uh, in, you know, whatever this new journey is for me. Um, it's hard to also trade an automated trading system. The same way you have emotions on a trend day, right, is the same way that you have emotions in an automated trading system where I'm in an $8,000 drawdown in a system that's supposed to only make $20,000 this year on a one lot. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do? Uh, and so there's managing your equity curve and there's all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but we've totally deviated from talking about trend days. <laughs> Baba, I'm that's sorry, all that's my fault. fault. It is. And, you know, we will pick this conversation up in the future. I just think I wanted to acknowledge that. I just wanted to say, I think that's a conversation worth having because I think we have people that are built a wall and throwing rocks at each other. And there's a great place to be in the middle. Yes. Yeah. Stats. Yeah. Where's, where's the trade, the man? Trade? And that yeah. influenced, and Stats, that influenced a lot of, um, a lot of decisions I made this week were stat were because of the idea of stats are mm -hmm. even some that I don't have a perfect number for. Which I was talking to Fleur, uh, the professor about uh, this week. Like I don't actually know the percentage on some things, but I've seen it so many times that I that I just I know it's likely. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, well, um, one of the things that kind of came up in the initial conversation was uh, impulsiveness. Like the when we we're talking about why people would be trying to continually try to catch the knife. Mm -hmm. It's that impulsive behavior. And this kind of ties in with the next topic that I had planned here was kind of like quieting that noise in your head. Uh, one of the things that I tried out this week, starting on Thursday, was just listening to some music um, while we're on stream together, just in the background, just download, just to have something going on in the background. Because one of the things I was noticing is when I'm, it's quiet and I'm sitting there with just my thoughts in my head, like they get very loud and they get very hard to ignore when there's nothing to take you out of that. Uh, just having a little bit of music in the background really seemed like it kind of quieted a lot of that need to be impulsive. I'm curious if you guys have had experience, do you guys listen to music too, or like, what do you guys do to like quiet the impulsive urges? I mean, I've tried, uh, gone through bouts of like brain music, you know, whatever that, whatever, if, if you just YouTube brain music, I think. Is that what that techno remix stuff was you're always yeah, listening to on streams? Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know if it's like some, you know, key or octave or whatever. If it's just like some catchphrase for fucking chill trans techno or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's, oh, it's basically man. just like calming uh, electric mm -hmm. music. You know, so I've done some of that. And, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think it definitely it helps like readiness uh, or whatever. But the, the biggest thing I, I think uh, short of like listening to music, the biggest thing that I've done is just like do affirmations before the market opens and mm -hmm. also just like really focus on not like, like just releasing the ego of it, like being happy. Cause I trade with other people. I know you guys do too. Like being happy when other people's ideas worked out, uh, whether it caused mine to be wrong or not caused, but like if, if a cause and effect right. of them being right was me being wrong. Um, and also just like trying not to get too, too married to the excitement of, of my trade. And I, like, it's so funny because the more you work on that, the more you hear it in other people. And it's like, 
it's funny when you catch yourself doing it too. You, and you're like, you catch man, yourself, I'm getting a little too excited. You catch here. yourself doing it and you hear other people doing it. And it's kind of interesting. Like, man, it can be a really good, like counter trend, uh, thing. And, you know, again, did my, you know, captain save a rounds this week with, uh, with, uh, with trend <laughs> stuff. I posted those pictures to you guys, but like you hear people like, cheering for 12 point oh. long pops on a 200 point down day and you're like oh yeah dude this is like we're going lower <laughs> <laughs> but like that like that that excitement is something that i also try to keep myself from uh which was the point yeah. of the example not to say you know whatever but like i find myself doing that as well and you can hear it and other people doing it and it's like wow like that whether it's like intentional, if it's like in the back of your mind, however, the brain is processing that when you're getting that excited about a trade that you in theory should have already known the thesis. Like when I sold uh, 950, was it 950? 950 was the o, uh, ODZ POC uh, retest, the 50 minute POC mm-hmm. retest. I sold 950, it traded like 955. And I know that the target was 75 points. And you just like, I, I know where my stop is. I know where my take profit is. And and like, you just have to sit calm. And when it, when it just shoots straight down. And I mean, I think it was, you know, it's a 70, 70 or 80 point trade, 90 point trade, something like that, like to the target, when it shoots down 40 points, like it did like right away, it's really easy to be like, yes, like, let's go. Yes, like, yeah, go bitch. Go like, you know I mean? Like, dude, I, I don't know if you guys, Burn if, it to the ground. if you yeah. trade on voice with folks or just like, if you li- record yourself, like you catch yourself doing these things. And so for me, it's to circle back to answer your question. It's, it's, yeah, I've tried the music, but for me, it's more about affirmations of like you, you've done your work. Uh, you know what the expectancy is. Just enjoy, like enjoy buying the ticket and taking the ride and, and celebrate after not during mm-hmm. celebrate after, after not okay. during um remorse after not during right because it's okay to be like ah oh, that sucks like nobody likes to lose but like it it hey okay we lost uh on to the next one i know i have edge right mm-hmm. it, but during the trade like pitying the fact that you're about to take a stop out things like that they lead to a place for the next opportunity that's not good and they lead to decision making opportunities to be doing wildly gross uh, or gross, grossly wild mistakes in the trade, right? Like maybe you're so excited about the 40 point drop that you miss an A plus ad in the trade. Uh, maybe you're so anxious about the stop out coming that you're uh, not reading an opportunity to maybe move your, move your stop loss to a safer spot or to add, uh, you know, correctly or incorrectly and, and, you know, whatever work the trade it's really hard to do that when you're emotional in the trade. So for me, it's about mm-hmm. affirmations and it's about trying to remain calm during the trade. Um, and, and especially when you train in groups, not letting other people's uh, success and or um, failures reflect in any way on my uh, decision-making yes. process. That's a great point. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing, I think that's been kind of helping with some of that because the, Accepting the loss has been something that I think that I've struggled with for quite some time. And Joel actually pointed out to me in, a, I think it was the strategy development call, or it might have been another time we were chatting. But that was one of the things I chose to focus on this week was take a loss or take a stop, like take a moment, make sure we actually fully accept the results of that trade. If we hit max draw on the account, or not max, but like personal daily loss limit, if we hit that $200 drawdown, then that account's done. Like, let's take a moment. Let's make sure we accept that that happened before we go in and start trading something else. And that's been huge for me. I think there's a moment we'll probably talk about in the good, bad and ugly. So maybe I won't spoil it, but yeah, Thursday, Thursday, I basically exercise or executed that flawlessly. And that, I don't know. I'm curious how the affirmation part works then. So like, what can you walk me through what that looks like? I mean, I more just take a moment to, uh, respect the amount of work and time that I put in on the screens, the planning that I put in pre-market. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, be honest with myself about whether or not I'm coming to the desk fully prepared today. Uh, mm-hmm. am, am I at my best? And I like I take a moment to do that. Uh, I usually try to be ready at least like 20 minutes before the market opens. There's some good trades that I, I eye up like right around the 7.30 time. Bobby, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but... <laughs> Anyways, I, I try to basically just take, uh, I'll mute my mic or like go on a uh, go on a walk or go out to the porch 
and just take a moment to just like calm myself, be like, listen, you, you know, it's like the guys before the game and the, you know, when they go out on the court and they're, you know, kind of like getting psyched up and, you know, they're feeling the moment. Yeah. You know, I, I, I take a time to do that. And it's something that I haven't always done is to just like reflect on the amount of effort and work that I've put into this and be, be prepared to honor that work when the market opens and also be prepared to accept the reality of whatever happens. And when, when I take a moment to do that, the losses are easier to take. The wins are easier to sit in and see to expectancy. Um, and everything that happens in between is basically my time where I get to enjoy this. I love that. So uh, Red, shout out to him because he's yep. out playing the MSPT right now. Hopefully he wins another one. <laughs> he, he talked about this when, when he was helping me with uh, some of the poker stuff. Um, I used to get really nervous. It's so funny because even when I would have the best hand, I would go all in mm-hmm. and my opponent's sitting there thinking about it, right? So we call it putting them in the tank. Yeah. Um, my opponent's sitting there thinking about it. And even when I have the best hand, I'm I'm physically nervous. I'm like almost sick to my stomach. Will they call? Are they going to fold? I want these chips, blah, blah, blah. And when I'm bluffing, I'm just like, oh my God, please fold, please fold, please fold. Yeah. Please fold. yeah. And we talked about this and he goes, man, you're missing, you're missing your moment. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, you're sitting there worrying. Think about what he's thinking about. Like, yes, like you, you're putting him in the grinder. You take this moment to sit there and go enjoy that shit. You motherfucker. Right. Like, (laughs) yes. Like, because I came to the game ready. Right. And I'm, I'm, this is my moment. You yeah. sit there and fucking worry about it. And I get to sit there and enjoy watching you have to try to figure out the position that I put you in. And when, when he said that and I started trying to implement that, I was like, man, it's it's like just like that in trading where like you do all this work. Right. And then you go and you implement your work and you fucking worry about it. The second you click the button, you're like, like all of your work said, I want to buy this level. You buy that level and you're instantly panicked about whether you're not you're going to take your step out. It'd no, like- sit sit and enjoy it right you enjoy it <laughs> like prematurely trying to fold while the guy's sitting there contemplating whether or not to call your raise yeah and so i mean again for me like that the affirmation is about taking a moment to one calm myself and know that i've come prepared or or like be honest with myself that like hey you know i'm i may be b game today i should size down or like i'm just going to be cautious like at least be be aware that i'm not maybe on my best um and and two more, most importantly it's just like reminding myself that like I deserve to be able to come in and, and deploy what mm-hmm. I've come up with, right? Like I'm confident in what I've done and I'm, and I'm ready to accept the, the results of whatever happens. And man, the, 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 uh, the closed loop of that, when you, when you come to the market, you say that affirmation, you believe in yourself, you do what you said you were going to do that. and you do win or you do accept the losses, even when you accept the losses it's really a great, um, you know, sort of like end to the day kind of thing. And it gives you the power to come back and do it the next day, whether you want to call it confidence building or just like uh, affirmation of like what you've done. Right. Dude, like, so accepting, accepting the results of the day is like one of the most freeing things I think I've done rather than sitting stewing on it, like try to get the journal done immediately, even if it was a bad day as far as results go. But mm-hmm. when I can go back and look and see that I still executed my process the way I was supposed to, uh, I'll accept that. Okay. Let's do it again tomorrow. Cause yep. if I keep doing this, it's going to be better. Longtime fans of the show should be familiar with the lender formerly known as Sue Pullen. And I'm pleased to announce that she's back fresh off a rebrand and ready to help as Sue Mackey. Sue is a certified mortgage advisor at Fairway Independent Mortgage, an equal housing lender who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. She has over 20 years of experience helping thousands of homeowners. Whether it's purchasing, refinancing, or even a reverse mortgage, Sue will help. Sue's licensed in 36 states now, so reach out and let Sue Mackey it happen for you. The best way to reach her is to just give her a call at 520-977-7904 or in an email, spullen at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number of 2289. Sue Mackey has an MLS number of 206048. That email again, S-P-U-L-L-E-N at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number is 520-977-7904. Shoot Sue an email and let her know she needs to update that address. What about you, Bob? Man? What, uh, you kind of were nodding your head at the affirmations there. It sounds like you do something similar. 
I have shared them with the room from time to time, maybe two or three times. We've talked through some of the affirmations. I've typed them out, posted them in there. Um, I have like a little routine in the mornings. This is going to sound weird. I like to, I'll come to the desk, look at things um, earlier, have coffee, take the dogs on outside, go for, either take them for a short walk or go sit on the porch, let them run around, that kind of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I I really like to take a shower fairly shortly before I come sit down and fire up everything, like to go live and be with you guys. And then a lot of times in the shower, that'll be my like, I've already t- looked at the market before. I've kind of like surveyed the scene, you know, sometimes I'll have a trade on, sometimes I won't, you know, but there's, there's oftentimes there's, you know, early morning trade I'll be in maybe. Depending on if there's 8.30 news and we, you know, get a great setup. Right. But then um, I like to take a shower and it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like it's like a process, you know. And like I'd, I like to go sh- get the shower, um, get ready, come to the desk, and then it's like right, right in. A lot of times when I'm in the shower, I'll listen to a recording actually of mm-hmm. from Pirate Traders, which I've mentioned uh, him, the brigade. I think you may have even yeah, emailed yeah, yeah. him about doing an episode. He does a lot of, he trades completely differently than I do. I like, but I like uh, what he does and he's a great TPO trader, mm-hmm. but I will listen to, he, he has like a guided hypnosis thing. I kind of skip the hypnosis part in the mornings. Um, Sometimes I'll so hypnosis or like a visualization. It's like a guided um, hypnosis thing. Um, it, it's more just like some breathing exercises and then listening to a series of phrases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not. I mean, it's not like hypnosis, but uh, sometimes I'll I'll go to sleep listening to that, um, mm-hmm. or most of the time in the morning in the shower, I'll have that. I'll skip ahead to the trading mantras and just listen to it. Because it's just a lot of great reminders. Like one of them is like, I have fun trading. Trading mm-hmm. is fun. Now, I don't get very giddy uh, like and excited about a good trade. And I usually don't get super like down and whatever. If I, you know, if I take a stop loss or if I hit TP, I'm not like a champion of either. Like I, I try to stay pretty even keel. But the trading is fun thing is something I try to remember because. I, it's not so much fun that I'm thinking, but like it really should, it really can and is oftentimes easy or the market can be more advantageous to my style Mm -hmm. on Thursday, for instance, like that was an easy day. It was a little, it was a little bit at first, like, are they going to make this annoying? And then it was super (laughs) easy after that. Yeah. When I start to feel like, oh, this is getting, this is annoying. I know that that's a cue for me that like I'm trying to impose something or I'm out of step or I've maybe overlooked something. Um, So another one is like, I'm not trying to take anything from the market. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not trying to abuse the market or do something negative or like in one way, like like your will. Yeah. um, Yeah. I'm just, I am trying to be available. That's another one of the mantras. I'm trying to be available to whatever, the opportunity of the moment is. Yep. And I think that stands in like stark contrast to like, I'm going to, you know, go win or kill it or whatever. So that's one thing. And then throughout the, so that's like a pre-trading thing. Um, Throughout the trading day, I mean, oftentimes either on the chart that you guys can see or on it on another monitor, I'm definitely like marking stuff off, right? Like writing little arrows, drawing boxes, just mm-hmm. to keep up with things that I've noticed unfold or things that I maybe uh, maybe I perceived something and I want to make a note of it for, you know, we trade back in that area or whatever. That's what I borrowed from you. I love doing that. Yeah, man. And that, that's a good one to keep me kind of kind of settled. I think um, it keeps you engaged, too. And it gives you something when you feel those impulsive urges. You can go back and look and be like, does that make sense? I tried listening to music. I get kind of like distracted by the, by music. Yeah. Some of my worst trading has been, I think it goes back to like when I've traded poorly, sometimes I've played music to motivate myself to like be more aggressive or something like that. 
and that has le- that has typically led to bad outcomes, you know. Yeah. So I steer clear of it. The only thing I'll listen to is no words music, like um, like lo-fi. So if anybody has ever looked at lo-fi girl, she she has no words beats in the background. I'll mm-hmm. listen to that from time to time. But I try to remember mostly throughout a day. I'm trying to remember that there's probably still a great opportunity. Like I was not super active this week. I don't feel, especially early on in mm-hmm. the week, I don't feel like I was super active. And then I kind of, you know, t- I, I kind of got active in the right, you know, a couple of good places this week that really made the week a good week. But I'll say, <laughs> I just think whatever it is for, for you, whether it's listening to music, whether it's trying to be a little more chill, whether it's trying to be more patient, whatever you can use to help, help facilitate that for you i think it's a key so like try some different things yeah if you're out there listening and wondering try yeah you can um just explore that a little bit because i i love the point you made flary about like honoring the work that's something that i don't it's funny we we end up in similar places oftentimes i have said that like a thousand times in our mm-hmm. in our group of guys uh and when we're when we've been trading we do all this work we spend all these hours back testing to watch something go right by us at times you know right or we deviate from what we know like what what we know looks good what we know what we have precedent for to to, to put risk on we deviate from that out of impatience or trying to force our will and then when the when something great comes along from a capital standpoint you're expired or mentally you're expired or even worse, what usually happened to me, or what used to happen to me, is I'd be stuck in a shitty long <laughs> fade when the A plus short opportunity yeah. sets up, and I can't bring myself to close that trade to take the right one. I, th- I think, I, and I'll just speak for me, and and I've talked to both of y'all about this um, off mic. The the hurry, or like mm-hmm. the hurry up and make a bunch, or hurry up and make Q one from twenty twenty four be a thing of the past where I don't think about it anymore because I'm so far past that, the the pace of like trying to accomplish or conquer or achieve, like all of that speed is oftentimes what is at the root of like a bad decision, bad decision making, yeah. or even just poor trade management. Like, you know, Flary, it drops 40 points. And you freaking jump up and celebrate, you know, cover half when that's not where you cover half. You know, right. those kind of things. But the satisfaction that you get in the immediate, allowing that to to supersede this longer term result that only would come from seeing this process through to or this trade through to its expectation. I just think there's something in all of that that's really key to like being able to, you know, perform well and, and not be caught up in every wiggle of the market, you know. I love that, dude. Uh, we ready to just do some good, bad, and ugly? I actually have a new song for us. Oh, sh- sure. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Cleo's Cleo's been playing around with the, uh, oh. the AI song creators. We got another one. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly of trading. We've learned the lessons of trend day fading. The days that hurt, the days that we need. As long as we don't blow out from greed. What's bad for you could be my good Cause I finally stopped buying like I knew I should <laughs> Big old wins but then almost breaking The good, the bad, the ugly of trade <laughs> We need to get a better outro Yo, for that's it. amazing! Oh, fucking nuts, dude God <laughs> Make your money while you can, because this fucking shit is over, dude. <laughs> We're all done. <laughs> We're all done. Uh, wow, man, that that's a, she, that is fucking impressive. Can she get us a? Can she make us an? Can she make us an intro so, a song for the for the for the pod for the oh, round, sure traders can, roundtable? And I want an avocado cool, themed song. Yeah, come on, man. I mean, what else can we? I just, I just I, want a, I I want a Flary a, song. Fuck, I want a John Wick song. Unbelievable. Man. <laughs> Flair, we <laughs> made you a song back at or the. Back to the oh Future is trading God. days. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that AI generated, though? No, that was Dan generated. Yeah, that's not the fucking same. <laughs> God, bless, God bless Dan, but AI's got him fucking uh, looking for work. Oh, God. That is, that is amazing. 
Who wants to lead us off here? I feel like Baba's got some some good goods. Baba's got some great goods that he's got to get off. Just fire it. It's going to take a while anyway, so just let him. No, it's not. (laughs) Um, Okay, so there wasn't... I mean, I don't know. The bad... I feel like if there was any bad... I don't know. I mean, I think it was good to be patient early week. I have said this over and over again. Not always perfectly executed. I'll be a day late to the short. I have just kind of... That has kind of been my mantra for this whole drag up because I've wanted to sell and we've talked about this thing will go further than anyone thinks is reasonable and blah, 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 buy the dip and all that. So Flurry rocked out, I guess, the 18th or was it the 17th? You were talking about the day before. I think that was that Wednesday. But I was I was like, yeah, I see that. I saw that. And, uh, and like I took a couple backside scalps and maybe – ass short somewhere in there nothing great um maybe this maybe it was a time i could have been a little more aggressive so the bad was that probably when i could have been a little more aggressive earlier in the week i wasn't out of defense you know and i I don't know there's like a little bit of good in that well you said you were going to be patient and that's what you did i did and if you ask banks like my my typical mo is to be a little too aggressive uh either way you know, right. throw a buy out there when no one else is and throw a sell out there when no one else is. That's like historically been what is awesome and makes you look great. And then also you pay the price for it. So Finders um, I've been especially uh, slow to short. Uh, so they've let me down so many times. The ugly, I mean, it's not really any ugly. Today was not the tidiest of trading, but I honestly was still riding, you know, fine from yesterday did you say you're good yet uh no i was leaving it till okay, the end okay okay good. the good of the, the the thing is that i got to third base um in trading <laughs> in trading he hit a triple i hit a triple i had a 300 point uh runner this week i know people i didn't victory lap it i almost victory lapped it on twitter and i was like that's that's distasteful the last time when we did a 200 point runner a couple weeks ago I've tagged Flary on on Twitter and said I need a GIF uh, for 200 or something. So, but I don't know. It's kind of over the feeling. Don't of it. get don't get too high. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Right. Um, so for the last for like the uh, since last like March or so, I've wanted to get a 300 point runner um, because I never really thought of that. And someone that we traded with got a 300 point runner, and it it really got to me. Um, <laughs> that someone got that and I hadn't achieved that yet. And so I, I wanted, tried to do that a bunch that year and kept letting 150 point and 170 point trades come all the way back. And then I almost quit holding runners for a little while because, um, you know, eggs in the basket, don't count them in the bush or whatever the saying is, you know, like <laughs> I needed eggs in the basket. And um, so, you know, we talk about how it's easier to capture uh, 40 points of a rotation than it is to capture three full average rotations kind of thing. So, right. But I told you to be patient that I would be back with you trying to catch runners again one of these days. And the last few weeks, you've probably noticed we've been... I, I've noticed you've had more <laughs> than just the 300-point runner. Yeah. You had a couple 100-pointers in there too. Yeah, there's been a couple of those. But that specifically that day, I had a 100-point runner, 200-point runner, and a 300-point runner. And then some other sprinkled trades in between or exits, but they were all from one batch of entries. So it was 20,062 and covered the last one in the last hour of the day at 762, which was like four points off the low of the day to cover for 300 (laughs) points. I remember um, I was hoping they were going to hit that for you. I was, I think I was sweating in well, they came at within the same ten, time. They came within 10 points of it. I know. At uh, like 1145. And that comes into a reversal window for us, you know? And so I was like, oh man, if they, they run it all the way back. And then I thought, you know what? Like we're, we're done here. Stops to break even. And we have all the trend day vibes. Let's try to get, let's try to get it. And, um, he did say hold it. He he did <laughs> say hold it. I he messaged did. him. Yeah, <laughs> I actually texted him and was like, "Dude, should I, you know, should I just close this out?" Banks told you to hold it when he closed his two hundred and two hundred fifty points earlier. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, he made a bad decision. So, um, so I got that. That's like a little feather in the hat. 
we had a little, I mean, it wasn't really much of a celebration. Like we just talked about it for a second in chat, but um, I gave you a fist bump at home for you. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was cool, man. Like that's a cool I accomplishment. A, I made you a gift. Let me yeah. Eat. You made three of them actually. <laughs> actually <laughs> message. When, it, when, when we were trading back up at like 19940, 19950, I messaged Flair and I was like, Hey, if this thing rolls over into the close, like I'm hoping it does, and I get this 300 point runner. I need you to, you're going to have to build me something, build me a gift or, or something, you know? <laughs> Next one he's making for us is going to be the cycle. I want the grand slam. Yeah. I don't know. 400 points will have to be on something epic, but we'll see if we can't one day do that as well. Uh, it's like FOMC yeah, yeah. bullshit. Yeah. But <laughs> the other funny thing about this was that I was holding that short runner and Flary took a really good long trade around that 1145 ish window. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, I just want to go on record and say I'm ignoring every piece of work that I have other than the fact that I want 300 points because it bounced a h- over 100 points off of that. Yeah, it was a good yeah. trade. Yeah. It was a really good trade that he was in. So back to the whole other conversation we had earlier of like you stick to what you're doing, stay in your lane, even if someone else is doing something different. There's, the, there's enough movement for everybody to do well, even if you're on different sides, you don't need to try to trade the trades someone else trades or follow every time someone else clicks. I mean, we talk about that in the room all the time. Like I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing to model what I think is good and responsible, but it's more about the actions around the idea than exactly the trade that I'm taking. And so um, I'm also the really proud of not wimping out of that when, you know, somebody that I have good high regard for was, trading the other way so mm-hmm. that was my good for the week it was pretty cool it's kind of like uh never done that before that had been pretty hard to not close that out when you hear flary telling you he's long i mean he sent me the dang screenshots dude <laughs> he sent me his fills i'm like bro come on kill me. I, think the, I was cursing you i was cursing your 300 point runner because it was holding the es up i thought for I'm sure, sure if yeah. i would have hit my target if you wouldn't have been shooting for that yeah but you also snagged an awesome late short that day didn't you was it that day was it that day or the next day? Yesterday? I or think today? it was. Oh, yeah. That's when I realized I still had a reset from mm-hmm. Top Step that I'd forgotten about. Yeah. I was like, yeah, all right, we'll just so, king short the shit out of this thing yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> promo code. So that's all. That's all I have to say. Man, fucking good week, dude. Thank I, you. I love hearing that. Yeah. Uh, Larry, man, what about you, man? Can you top 300 points? No. Um, but I, I also didn't go. I didn't go for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Fair uh, enough. I, I was in. I was in two hundred points of that move. Yeah. Uh, two separate times, but uh, you know, yeah, God bless that dude. I mean, that's a hell of a trade uh, and a conviction trade. But it comes. Back, dude, I mean, like I, I know this is my good, bad, and ugly. But you know, fuck it. I'm going to talk about Bob. Like, <laughs> it, it, it comes back to. Uh, it comes back to the talk about like this arbing stats. Yeah. Like you've done the work and you know that there's a pretty good probability that we make this low in the last hour and you're willing to sacrifice, you know, what is, uh, you know, I, I think, what did I get? I, I think I got 120, 130 points out of that long and I didn't even buy the bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you took some heat, right? Uh, and it rotated back down and it took out the low, you know, not by much, but by enough for you to hit your landmark. Uh, was it a good trade? Probably not in the sense of like whatever, but like, was it right? And did you have some logic to back it up that we should have taken a, a push lower? Yes. And I think that that's what's cool about like sort of this, like, you know, you did the work, you know, what is the expectation? You know, I, I would say, I think you should have added obnoxiously <laughs> at VWAP. But if you're, if you're going to hold for a hundred point pullback in your face, you probably should have added at VWAP. That should have been your bad that you didn't. There you, go. there you go. Okay. Sorry. I didn't add a VWAP, but I also, I was not, I was, I was okay with giving it all the way back to there because I took that trade with a, a few contracts to start with. So like my day was more than done. And it was like, I'm done. Dude, the only reason I'm in this. My long the, sacrifice the, was for the what memes. gave you your 300 point runner. It, it was only for I, the memes, dude. I didn't, I didn't set it to break even, but I think I gave back like uh, 70 points or something like that on, on the runner. I put it below that next, like there was like a, they pushed up and then they pulled back and gave like uh, a, a nice swing low. And then they pushed up to view app and it was like 75, 75 or 80 points from where, where the top was. I, I sacrificed for you that part. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Real quick, just to Bob's credit too, the start of the day, he said that this is the type of day where this is possible. 
I think he he knew it was uh it was going to be well, on deck. We we also we all uh, it, so like I'll say that the possible was the hundred fifty you know into two hundred like that range. That's that's where we had. Um, I think the the trade thesis was the peak above balance, either from the weekly and the daily. They were lining up. There was an overlapping value area high and um some other stuff from a composite of overlapping value days and the weekly balance area that we pulled back into there was like there was stuff that made me think it was squishy to the down like it was it was a little there was room to go now i didn't know we were going to go down 300 points that's why it was one contract with my eyes closed squinting you know (laughs) just waiting to see for the for the for the simple meme of it but but yeah, I felt, I mean, that day had a lot of opportunity from multiple modes of work, mm-hmm. not just the 30 second. I think it was a no tick 30 second OR almost. If it wasn't all the way, the VWAP stuff, PTBD. everything we talked about last Friday. <laughs> I think I was asking you of Flurry's checklist. Is there a double distribution? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. OR? I mean, we, 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 hit it, we, we hit it all. Like we hit it all. And so that was like as the auction developed, but then also where we were structurally that day from uh, like if you do TPO, overlapping value da, 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 da. there was all kinds of other stuff that was that was setting that day up like to, to be one that we had Sweet the chance the so like we talked about targeting swing lows <laughs> not not support uh, yeah yep, yep. all right it's enough fucking talking about Bob. <laughs> okay um, i'll stop <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thank kidding, you brother. thank you everybody i'm thank just you. kidding brother i love you and i'm glad you had a great week yeah, man congratulations uh okay my good is you know we just we I was ready for this week, you know. Again, one part luck, one part preparation, and whatever the saying is, where that shit meets, and and you know the market agrees. Uh, I was ready for this week. I never overstayed my welcome. I uh, took most of the trades that I saw to expectancy. It was a good week. Uh, so yeah, I just from that like. I did the work. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm present. Like it was just a good week. So that, that that's my good, you know, not that it was short. I love shorting. I love shorting. <laughs> not that it was shorts. Um, but I was, I was longing all previously. So like to be able to go with the flow and, and, you know, again, respect the time frame that I trade on, which is relatively like a day uh, and, and the good, like a good meat of the ATR of the day. I did my job as I define it this week. Uh, relatively well or about as well as um i think i can do so that would be my good i would say the bad man it's just uh, you just these days are are tough when you trade with people um they saw a lot of a lot of people uh, lot get of, hurt yeah yeah you know so again uh for all the celebration just you know the, that that's why we have these conversations because there's encouragement to be had that like dude I've lost accounts on on weeks like this I've lost multiple accounts I've lost uh you know a lot of money on weeks like this um I, I've made a lot of money on weeks like this and uh the encouragement is that uh you learn from the mistakes or just learn from the mistakes and and that's why we have conversations like this again and hopefully that it um either encourages somebody that there's light at the end of the, uh, I, I bought the dip all the way through a, uh, you know, 2% sell week or whatever tunnel. But there's also, you know, I, you know, like Baba's experience and things like that. Like, uh, I've learned from this and I'm now capitalizing on it and, and really the culmination of this last two weeks of, of conversation. So the ugly would just be like, you know, even though, uh, we're here spending some time on a Friday night talking about, you know, the pitfalls and the successes of weeks like this, uh, and last week, uh, the reality is uh, there's there's still a lot of people that uh, are either you know blindly following people that have no fucking clue what's going on, uh, or you know they're just being stubborn and ego trading and you know just doing the thing. And I saw you know a decent amount of it, mm-hmm. uh, whether it was on Twitter and the groups and and stuff like that. And you know again that's probably just the bad is that it's uh it's humbling to know where you've come from. By the grace of God, there go I. Uh, yeah. You know it's just like I. I I just know every time I see moves like that, man, like there's a small part of me that goes, oh, I, I, like, I message Baba. I finally had the realization when you see those random like 50 lot orders that fire off in the middle of nowhere. Like, oh, that's somebody who's really just did something stupid. Yeah, or, you know, just or that's the end. Pay me. Pay me here. <laughs> yeah. Or what? Yeah. Or CN. So, yeah, I mean, again, like it's a humble reminder that 
you know, for every good week, there's an opportunity to have a bad week on stuff like this. Uh, hopefully it's not the last trade I ever take uh, when, when you know, these sort of day types or, or week types go bad. But, um, you know, it's a humble reminder that uh, there's definitely there's always someone on the other side of a 300 point runner. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I would say the ugly. Yeah, there was there was a lot of opportunity this week and potentially left on the table. Not necessarily like um, anything that I'm super upset about, but I've been a big advocate for just like taking my piece and, and letting it be. And uh, it's funny because like I go through these phases of like when I really feel like I'm, I'm feeling the market and vibing uh, with, with my, with my work, I'll stay and I'll push Mm -hmm. And, but I let, like, I'm, I'm trying to let it come to me a little bit more. And uh, I've gotten in trouble being too aggressive too soon. Like Bob was saying, like, you know, I don't want to be, the, you know, I'm not a day one shorter, but I'm potentially a day two or something like that. It's funny because, like, you know, you have these weeks where your work just works. That was this week for me. And um, although I had, uh, I had five green days, I'm going to call my ugly the fact that, like, man, uh, when you go back and you look at it, you're like, holy shit. This could have been a year maker. Yeah, it really could have. Uh, so, you know, but again, I respected the fact that, like, I don't think I traded much past, uh, except for coming back and taking the long on Thursday uh, after it based. I don't think I traded much past uh, 930, mm-hmm. uh, 10 o'clock central. Most of my targets were hit relatively quickly. I re-entered a few shorts um, and took, like, the second leg down and some things like that. But... Uh, there was some opportunity to be in adding and, uh, you know, like you said, making the month and things like that. And it's just funny because you go and you watch like all of your stats. Like I, I have maybe one, two, three, I have like five modes of work that tell me something on a relative basis of whether it's high time frame daily or whatever. None of it missed this week. Uh, my high time frame uh, bullish shift hit and then uh, broke down my uh, weekly setup that said sell basically the top and target, uh, you know, 400 points lower mm-hmm. hit by Tuesday. Uh, the, o, uh, the opening range or, you know, the opening drives on 15 minutes literally played like, I think four out of five days this week, the 32nd opening range, Like, you know, it's just like, it was one of those things where it's like, if you've, if you prepared for it, like, don't get me wrong. It was a great week, but like the ugly would probably be like, eh, could I have shifted? Uh, could I have been more uh, aware of, what we what we had going on um and and captured a little bit more like i'd like to think future me this would have been like a week where i hang my hat on and uh i'm more than content with the fact that uh current me just didn't blow an account right um you know but uh again i i I also am going to call like i'm 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 aware enough about like what this game is about that um i'm going to call it ugly because i i do think that there's a version of me in this space that should have recognized that there was an insane amount of opportunity to just continuing to be dude Pax always says it best like just be short below the opening range mm-hmm. like like just be like if you would have just gotten short below the opening range early in the week and then just like carried these trades into multiple time frames i mean i guarantee you there's a reason why he came on and did uh what did he, he did the what do they call it a spaces on Thursday, it's because we we hit uh, we hit the M contract close, which was like seven sixty three, seven forty seven, and I guarantee you, uh, and I apologize, Pax, if you ever hear this and I'm wrong, but I guarantee you, it's because he closed a massive multi day short because he was short and adding below the opening range for multiple days, and then it hit on Thursday, and he was like, "Yep, just closed," you know. X dollar, uh, you know, really exciting trade and I'm going to hold the spaces. And, uh, you know, again, I, I see like, honestly, that's what had that in the back of my head is like, man, I, I know he just had a great week because whenever he does that, I feel like it's always like when we hit these big <laughs> quarterly targets that he targets or whatever, uh, contract roll targets. So, you know, it was a, it was a reminder of like someone who's really seasoned just made their potentially year or at least quarter uh this week and i had a great week but i did not make my quarter so i'll i'll call that the ugly all right i think that's fair man i don't really have a whole lot to talk about we kind of touched on my one like the best thing that i wrote down i think on looking through my journals was as a specific moment on thursday and baba i know i sent you the screenshot of the moment on the chart that i wrote down this is 
the first, uh, I don't know, like five or six trades I took were not great. Um, I ended up hitting uh, real close to a personal daily loss limit on that first account. And I was having a real hard time accepting the fact that that had happened. Like I was feeling that urge to come back and start clicking buttons again. And like I wrote it on the chart, like right here, I'm having trouble accepting this. And that was the moment where I decided I was going to get up. I was going to go talk to my wife. I was going to go freshen up, get a drink, like do some things to kind of calm down, reset. And taking that time to accept that loss, I was able to come back and put it out of the mind and just capitalize on some beautiful opportunities later in the day. That's something that I feel like three months ago, two months ago, probably would have led to a personal loss limit on two or three more accounts. But to be able to, to try to think of how to say this, like one of the things that I did this week was to specifically say like in the morning, I'm going to be a trader who accepts the outcomes of his trades. Um, so it just felt really good to be able to look back at the end of this week and say, Hey, I did that, man. I did all those things that I said I was going to do. I said, I was going to be patient. I said, I was going to be responsible. I said, I was going to be balanced mentally. I said, I was going to be accepting. And I checked those boxes every day this week and results. Great. That's awesome. I love the way that they came out this week, but being able to hit the process 100%, man, like that's where it's at. That's what's going to lead to long-term success. And I'm just freaking stoked about that. Hell yeah, man. Congrats. I don't think I really have anything bad to say either. The only thing, the only thing I could really say was today I had a gold trade that I got, I got a little scared out. I had reason for closing the trade, but then to close it and then watch it, like go and hit your target, like 20 minutes later, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> but I mean, the, it was following the process, like, you know, the, the chart said, scratch this, I scratched it. And that's something I'm not usually good at doing, but I, I mean, I've scratched multiple trades this week and I don't know, just picking up some momentum and I just hope it continues going forward. And I got you guys to thank for all that. So really like, really appreciate like the, the knowledge you guys share here, the encouragement that we get from you guys. Like it's, it's, it's awesome. Let's go. All right. Uh, let's get that bold pie diction. <laughs> PiBot has predicted that TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Company, is going to make history next week when it becomes the first semiconductor company to reach a one trillion market cap. How much? How much is that up? Ah, uh, it's right now at like eight hundred and fifty billion, I think. So it's not terribly far away. But do they have earnings? I don't think so. I I asked him if he was sure he wanted to stick with that. He said, "Yeah, yeah, we'll roll with it." Should I start taking these trades? I'm starting to wonder a little bit too. I mean, he's not been completely right, but he's been pretty. Can you tell me these things on Friday? So, well, do I really want to buy calls over the weekend and like give weekend data? But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, yeah, I do. Can you, you need to start running this shit while the market's open so that I can buy. I'll give you the, the some bot. calls. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh. Man, it had an eleven percent sell off today, so I don't know how. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, are they taking some heat for crowdsource or whatever the fuck that was? It but must be. I don't know what they're, they're getting beat up on. Oh, all right. So long. <laughs> what's the sig? What's the symbol for that? TSM. Or TSM. TSM. Yeah. TSM. Yeah. I mean, all right, we'll see. I, I don't. I don't know about this one. I, mean, I, I didn't believe that. Uh, right last week, honestly, like if NQ was down. Five percent, wasn't it? Uh, it's probably pretty close to that, wasn't it? Yeah, I I just always assume the bots talking about NQ. I don't really care about ES. Fuck ES. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's gonna do it for today's episode. Darn. I l- gotta say thank you, Flary Baba Yaga, for joining in tonight. All you guys in the chat for for sending in those messages and making us feel stupid. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the <laughs> God damn it. Sorry, I'm still laughing. Yeah, at we're going to replace this outro with AI outros here soon, guys. So just uh, Can we do that? Is that- it? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> All right, folks. That's going to do it for today's episode. I want to say thank you to Flary and Baba Yaga for joining us tonight and everyone listening for sticking around until the end. Remember to show our panelists some love and click on those links in the show notes. Visit VantaTrading.com to join Baba Yaga every morning and bandoftraderspodcast.com where you can browse our huge catalog by guest. And don't forget about airsoftmasters.com. We'll be back soon with another exciting episode. Hopefully 
safer than sloped roof. But until then, be the listener that rates and reviews your favorite shows and have a great week. Damn, dude. We went with the sloped roof outro. Do I need to use my backup? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Gonna fucking let me know you're getting me into some political fucking crosshairs, no well, pun intended. That's Secret Service, right? There's Holy nothing to worry shit. about here, okay? I know okay. what things we need to worry about, and I'm Did gonna you? go ahead and tell you there's a lot of them, but this isn't one of them, okay? He's a great guy, okay? Did you see Shane Gillis do <laughs> uh, his impersonation oh of God. Trump on. Those are American Kill tits, Tony. they're great tits. <laughs> Uh, I felt those tits in the back. <laughs> They're very real. They're very real. That's the Mexican problem with this administration. Yep, yep. Mexican tits. tits. <laughs> One suck uh, and you're dead. Uh, <laughs> okay, I gotta so hit the stop good. button before we. Uh, do dude. I need to do the other one? I can do the back. No, I really don't it. care. Okay. So, but they can fucking cancel me all they want. I really don't give a shit. <laughs>